Hello, my name is Anne. Welcome to my home studio in Parker, Colorado. You're watching Art on the Creek, and it is the winter solstice 2023, the shortest day of the year. I thought it would be really fun for us to paint something to commemorate this mystical time. Have you seen on social media where people will go out with a soap bubble in freezing or below freezing temperatures and the bubble will develop crystals? I love those time lapse videos and watching those crystals grow. It's just fascinating to me. I think we could accomplish something very similar in watercolor. So let's go try and paint a frozen soap bubble today. Before we continue though, please subscribe to Art on the Creek if you haven't done so already by clicking on that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell too so that you'll always know when I launch a new tutorial or a product review. Of course, if you do enjoy content like this, make sure that you give it a like, leave a comment, or share it with your friends. If you'd really like to take your art skills to the next level, I would encourage you to consider a membership with Art on the Creek. When you're a member or patron of my channel, your membership includes an extensive library of tutorials covering drawings and paintings of a variety of subjects, not just beautiful Colorado, and also in many different art media. You'll have full and unlimited access to an ever-growing members library of tutorials and reviews, as well as the opportunity to receive guided feedback and critique from me. And also, you'll have direct input into which art technique or medium you'd like to learn more about as a member, as well as access to free art supplies. All of that and more is included in your membership, and it's all very conveniently right here on YouTube. There is a link in the description below that will go over all the membership details. But if you still have any questions, just ask me in the comments and I'll be sure to help you out. Now, let's move on to today's subject, shall we? Here's a link to our reference photo. It is from Unsplash, a free reference photo site for artists. And they also have an app if you are not familiar with that. It's a good one to have on your phone. Well, what I wanna to do today is to use these mixes that I made. These, uh, I'll put a link up here in the corner to the video where I did these. Most of these were inspired by DaVinci. I'll also have an affiliate link in the description for some DaVinci watercolors, um, if that's something you're interested in. They are very transparent, very wonderful to layer, and I really enjoy using them. Uh, this is a B watercolor paper journal. It's 100% cotton. This particular one is eight by eight. Always exciting to start a new journal. And I have some fun washi tape here. Let me dig into the old pickle jar and we'll pull out some something seasonally appropriate. I have some winter snowflakes here. Let's put those on. The pages in these bee journals are really nice because not only are they 100% cotton, I really like the texture. You can use both sides and they're micro perforated, which is why I'm putting a little bit extra tape across the top. If I do decide to tear this out, I want all edges to be, um, all the sides of the border rather, to be the same width. So hopefully I got that right. I'm going to use this cat's tongue brush today by Silver Black Velvet. It's a three quarter oval actually. And we're just gonna put a circle right there. So let me get my circle form. I've also grabbed a table salt because I think that might be a fun thing to use here. It's always good to create some frost with a good salt effect. That's just regular old table salt. You can use any kind. You can use your Himalayan flaked pink salt if you want to. <laughs> or rice. Rice will work too. Um, here is the pencil sharpener I'm using. It's an AFMAT long point pencil sharpener. I'm going to go in with a walnut uh, watercolor pencil. This one is an Albrecht Durer Faber-Castell and I really like using the walnut brown because it's very, you can really get a very subtle line and still see it when you paint a wash over it. So I'm gonna use the second to the largest circle here. I think I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want it and very lightly I'm tracing a circle in. So I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but um, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to put a circle over there to the right. And then I'm just kind of making little arc marks here, suggesting where those uh, uh, little branches or fronds of grass will go. I probably won't be able to see those as soon as I get the watercolor on, but I'm going to go ahead and draw them in just for my, my layout sake, for my visual sake. Now you can see I'm putting quite a lot of water on here. I live in a very dry climate and I have found even if I wet the back of the page and you know tape it down and do all the all the things, 
it still dries out on me. So I have found that this is really just the best way for me to do it, especially when working in a journal. You can't really wet the back of the page. Um, I just want to make sure that I've really got a good, even coat. And this brush, you can see what a wonderful mop effect it has. It's a very nice brush for creating large washes. And on this 8 inch by 8 inch journal, it's really just about the perfect size. I like these silver black velvet brushes. They have a little bit more of a drag to them than some of my other brushes, but if you like that kind of feedback, they're really great to have. So here is the palette I'm using. I love these little palettes. They are, uh, you can get them in half pans or full pans, and uh, the full pans here, the one I have, is 20, 20 little half, uh, full pans, and they have a magnet uh, sticker that goes on the bottom, and they just stay in place. The lid stays on. I just love these things. Um, this is my version of Da Vinci's Soul Shine. It looks extremely orange here, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just really make it as thin as we can and just spread it around. I love the way that the sun is shining in this photo, kind of in the back. And I'm assuming it's over some kind of a tree line. I'm going to use the lid to this to, um, to create a palette here. So there's some cobalt that's going down. And this cobalt is actually, I think it's Magello Mission Gold. And then my mix of Payne's Gray, put a little bit of that in there, but I want to keep it as blue as I can. Just dropping this in, and it really does roll off this brush pretty nicely. Uh, creating an uneven horizon line. That's all I'm doing. Uh, I want to make this a little bit more blue, I think. So I'll go in with some more cobalt. And all of this is wet into wet or wet into damp. I'm mixing in some lavender, and this is my mix of lavender. Again, all of these mixes are modeled after uh, Da Vinci mixes. And I really fell in love with the Da Vinci paints when I very first tried them. And so I tried to make my own mixes. So I will link to those uh, Magello Mission Gold Pure Pigment set if I can still find it. Sometimes it's not available on Amazon, but I will link to whatever I can find for you. That is Magello Mission Gold because they're nice paints as well. Um, neither company is sponsoring me, by the way, nor is B Paper. Or, I'm just not sponsored by anyone for this particular video. This is just good old me talking to good old you. <laughs> and I'm just sharing with you some of my favorite products here because that's what makes art fun is if you like your art supplies, chances are you'll use them more, so you'll practice more, so you'll get better. It's just one big snowball effect, really. <laughs> I'm going back and forth with the lavender and the cobalt and mixing in a little bit more of the Payne's Gray. And then I did end up adding just a touch of what I call Anne's Mama Violet. It's modeled after Jean's Hicks, Jean Hicks's Mother Violet, and that is a Da Vinci paint. Um, I tried to do the mix uh, the same way, the same ratios that they had it there in the, in the pan that's already pre-made. And I got pretty close. Uh, it sure was fun though to try and create all those mixes. And now, you know watercolor dries, there's a color shift. It will dry lighter than what we see here. And right now, I'm kind of judging, I'm, I'm kind of trying to decide where I want to put more pigment. But first, I'm noticing that the uh, watercolor is really leaching into my bubble space a little bit and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going around with my mop brush and um, cleaning it off and then damp, excuse me, cleaning it off, so dipping it in the water, and then tapping it on the towel. And what that does is that's a damp, thirsty brush. So what you can do with that is lift off. And um, that's exactly what I did there to kind of clean out the bubble. And I left a little bit more pigment toward the bottom because you can see on our reference photo, it is a little bit more blue down there. So now I'm mixing the cobalt with some more of that Anne's Mama Violet. And I'm going to add some purple up here to this horizon. I thought that that uh, Payne's Gray kind of just made it a little bit harsh, but we're going to go in now very gently with it and let it blend with the purples and blues that I've already got down. And I think, honestly, I think this ended up being the key because it really helped after this is dried now, and you'll see it here at the end of this clip, it really helped established that that sunlight was behind and maybe there was some other light that the sunlight was behind the trees and maybe there was some other light behind our view the sun is either rising or setting and um, we've, we can see the shadows of the trees we can always also maybe see something else coming out of there so it just worked out to be one of those serendipitous moments let's see what else can I tell you I'm putting in a little bit of, a, of the horizon here and then I notice that this section of our reference photo it's just a little bit of a darker mass right there so I'm not entirely sure what that is. Maybe it's an out of focus bit of shrubbery or something, uh, but I wanted to get a little bit of darker pigment right there. 
Now, the one really great thing about all of these pigments, first of all, the paper has enough texture. It's lightly textured, but it's got enough. This would be really fun to do on rough textured water, watercolor paper as well. But this has enough texture to where these paints are going to be able to do what they need to do, and they're going to granulate, which is really nice because that's going to give us all kinds of great wintry looking texture. Think of the way frost looks on a window pane, how it looks kind of kind of crackly and crystally. And those kinds of textures are what we're going to try and create here. And I really like how loose this one is. It's just so much fun. I have this mason jar of salt that I'm going to open up here. And like I said, it's just Morton's table salt in this case. And I'm kind of just sticking this salt, mainly keeping it toward where those fronds are. I think they're grasses. I think it's like some wheat grass that of some sort that is kind of frozen and bent over. Um, but that's where I want to have the salt effect because I think, I think it'll work. Let's find out. Well, here we are, we've come back and the salt has taken effect. I really like that it's kind of come into where the bubble is a little bit because that'll help out with our crystals. And I'm just really liking what's happening with the horizon. Do you see how the purple kind of stayed below the Payne's gray and here it's emerging, like there's purple here, Payne's gray here and Payne's gray down here. So I really like the way that all of the water had time to play on this. So let me brush the salt off and we'll get right back to it here. The other thing that I really like about this bee paper is it's very easy to get the salt off of it. Sometimes I have some issues. There, you can really see it there. Sometimes I have some issues getting the salt off. It just wants to stick. But here in this case, I want to come right off. Let's get back at it here. Now, for the, the bubble itself, I guess I'll zoom in a little bit. First thing I want to do is remove a little bit more and clean up that circle shape because it really is a good solid circle. It's very, very, uh, very crisp. So we're gonna put this back on here and you can see now that I've got the, the form on here, you can really see where, where it's kind of leached in a little bit and that's okay. But like I said, I want it to be really crisp. So what I'm going to do is to take a sponge and kind of just pick that up. Now the sponge that I have right here is just a household kitchen sponge. I'm just dunk it in my water. You can use a natural sponge, you can use a paper towel, and I'm just going to gently lift, just wiping over it really gently. I'm just trying to really get that edge created. I don't necessarily want to lift up the color, I just want to clean up the edge. And I'll blot that. And that cleaned that up just enough, just enough. And the one thing I like to do when you're done using these circle forms Dry them off a little bit because you want to make sure that you're not leaving any pigment on there for your next painting. Okay? This is a really nice fine point acrylic paint pen. What I want to do, let me make sure this is dry since we lifted off that extra pigment there. We want this to be really dry because I don't want this next paint to, uh, to bleed anywhere. Go ahead and dry the back. Now let's work right here first. We'll just go on this side and I can see, you know what I'm gonna need to do is start my pen over. There we are. I can see that there is a bit of a shape right here. There we go. I did squeeze that pen to have some of the paint come out because what I can do is I can feather up from there. I can just kind of pull these out into little feathers and that'll look okay. Now let's see, we've got another little bit right back here. And that kind of comes down here. And it's going to follow this line pretty much all the way to this side over here. So now I don't want to set my hand in it.
And then on the far side, it kind of comes down like this. Get a little bit more pigment that can come out. There, and you know what? This is coming out so thickly that I'm gonna change course here and just clean this up with a brush a little bit because that's just thicker than I want it to be. There, now that's all I wanna put on for now. Let me pick some of this up here. There, I think that's okay. All right, dry this off. And I wanna go back into my paint here. I wanna go into some cobalt. There we go. I want to be very blue, but also very, very sheer. I don't want any of the other colors in there. Using the very tip of my cat's tongue. Kind of trying to put this blue wherever I see that it's a little darker in the photo. And this part is wet on dry. All right, let's give that a dry and see how that looks. I think I want to go in with another wash, another little bit here, and I'm still using that same cobalt blue. And I'm just going to drop a little bit more in. Kind of going where I had it before, but not completely in all the same places. And it's darkest, let me just add just a touch of that purple to it. It's actually darkest right in here. And this part I'm dropping in wet on wet. Uh, maybe a little bit back here too. Okay, now we've got our bubble. Now I'm gonna use the same paint. So I'm gonna clean this palette off. Sorry for the glare if there is any. And I'll just squoosh out some paint. Using a number four round Taquan brush. And this edge isn't quite round enough here. So I'm gonna clean that up. That was really sticking out to me. And this edge here, I want a very fine white line. There we go. And I think over here, kind of the same thing, just really fine, kind of clear up a little bit of those bumpy edges. Now for the feathery bits. Let's do one up here. And you want to remember that your object is round. So the best way that I can explain to you how to do this is paint it as if you were painting on a round surface. So pay attention to the curves of your lines. Pay attention to how, uh, 
how things blend, how they look together. Ooh, let's see, this one's kind of a triangular shape of, uh, of feathers. Here we've got this one, and one comes out here, and one comes out here. So you see on this feather, I'm kind of curving it up, and this one curves down, well, down and down, and then this one can be a straight line. It can have a slight curve at the end because the top of our ball would be up here. So now we'll just move our little feather lines along here. And I'm just doing quick short strokes, getting uh, shorter as I get closer to the tip of the feather. I'm calling it a feather, but it's actually, you know, crystals. And this one's going up this way. Now don't worry, it uh, might seem a little white on white, but what we're going to do is go over this again with a wash and it should make this white stand out because the watercolor should miss it. It shouldn't stick to it. Well, hopefully, hopefully everything I'm doing here will work. There's another one here and this one is kind of has thicker. More lines to it. This right here. And it really just kind of comes down this way in a bunch of these feathery lines. Let me get some more of this paint pen going. Make sure this is dry one more time. Yes, it's working. Ha ha. I like that. Okay, now for our little grasses. We'll go back to our, actually, I'm gonna change up. I'm gonna go to a liner pen. This is a script liner. It is a number, number one. And let's take a look at our paints here. I think I really like, um, there's a Van Dyke Brown and I've got uh, my version of Denise Soden's green. So let me go into the green first. Here's the green I'm using. And then the brown is this Van Dyke Brown. There we go. I want it to just be a real kind of a muddy, dark green. And this palette lid, I keep saying you can do this and I really should do it. If you paint this with uh, appliance paint, then you'll have a white surface to work on. Okay, that's a good color. So for the grasses, we've got one that is kind of goes through the bubble here, but I don't want to do that one yet. I want to do this one first because I want to show you something with that. So very lightly, coming down like that. That's the main branch. And then we're just kind of going to, going to kind of go off of it like so. This is a very thin line.
make it a little thicker here. All right, so there's the first one. And then the second one, it's kind of going through the bubble and it's just a little bit out of focus back here. So I'm gonna get this area wet right here. Not too wet. And then when I go into my paint, it should work. Yes, absolutely what I wanted to see. Got confused on my lines there. That's okay, we'll just have one more blade of grass. All right, now, same color mix. We need to have a lot of little, little leafy parts coming off here. Not gonna do all of them, just suggesting that they're there. Kind of going a little bit fast so that they look a little bit uh, energetic. I think that they are frozen in the photo, but I'm just going to leave mine like this. I think we'll do some we'll do some fun salt or not salt uh, splatter. I think there we are. There's our grass, and I like the way that it looks through the bubble. And we are just about done. This has been just a joyful, simple painting to do. Let's dry this. And now I'm gonna work on a little bit of splatter, but what I wanna do first is really cover the area where I don't want it. So I don't want it here. Yeah, that'll stay down a little bit better. All right, that's the only place I want splatter. For this, I'm going to use the Bleed Proof White. And I'm gonna go in with a brush. I'm gonna use like a number eight round. This is number 10. Getting this fairly liquidy. No matter what I do, I get it everywhere I don't want it. Now I'm a speckled girl. <laughs> that one was a little bit big. That's the ticket. And I don't want to do too much, so that's about it. All right. I'm just gonna carefully place some snow on top of some of these branches. Fronds. What should we call them? Probably fronds. Because we need a little bit of contact with the bubble here. There we go. All right, let's clean up our splishy, splashy mess and give this a dry, and then we are good to go. All right, now we're gonna take the tape off, and when you do that, 
I always recommend pulling away at a 90 degree angle. So basically pull away from the center and use a heat tool. Heat up the area before you pull it because that will prevent it from uh, tearing your paper at all. I'm gonna sign it here. I've got a pigment liner that I can use and I'm gonna title it Winter Solstice. Well, here's the final view of our painting and I do apologize again that it wasn't in full frame throughout, but you know what? We're all friends here. <laughs> I hope you guys have a magical solstice and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye now.